Hi Dean. Chris. First of all, I just want to talk a bit about your background. When did you when did you first start getting into coaching, like making the transition from a player um, to a coach? I think the back end of my time at West Brom, uh, so approaching probably 36, 37, 38, I was moving into an area where I was playing every week and then West Brom got promoted into the back into the Premier League and then Scott Carson came in to become the first team goalie which bumped me down to a, a sort of backup goalkeeper which is probably the first time it had, it ever landed in my lap and it was then really that I thought about that it's probably not enough, it doesn't consume enough of my time just to train Monday to Friday and not have a game on a Saturday and, and so that took a big chunk out of um, my professional life and then obviously the coaching sort of fell into my lap a little bit because um, at West Brom Tony Moby then afforded me the position of uh, being a sort of player coach if you will so um, and it worked out well it was, a, it was a great transition a real smooth transition so it was really good for me. Up to that point who had been your kind of coaching influences? I think, I think the influences come from people you play with, players as well as coaches and coaches who, so for example uh, Mickey Cole at Charlton who was a, a goalkeeping coach and also a physio and a sports scientist was a real influence on me. David Coles when I went to Portsmouth um, and you sort of migrate to people who are like-minded and have the same values as you and the same sort of work ethic and that those fellas certainly did and sort of moulded and shaped my career and I think gave it a longevity because I had a professional contract till I was 41 and a half really although albeit a, a backup sort of a goalkeeper I was still you know signed at a professional terms up until that age and that's got a lot to do with probably me and my attitude towards my career but also the people who helped and coached that. So, is it quite hard to find what your voice as a coach is at first, like what kind of coach you're going to be? Yeah, definitely. Um, that was a real, real issue for me because um, I'd been in the change rooms as a player with, you know, Jonas Olsen, Chris Brunt, James Morris and all these people that I was a, a colleague and a teammate and then all of a sudden your status changes. You're still a player coach, but then obviously the coaches try and bring you over to a side where you've got a desk in the office, you know, your day's consumed with office duties and then you go and watch games and scout games so it changes yeah and and there's a little bit of you know leg pulling in terms of you know oh, sh Dean's here sort of thing from a player you know just it's all sort of light-hearted but yeah it, it does change and it's it's from, from my point of view it's important I'm quite a strong character and it was important to me to really stamp my authority in terms of how I wanted to do it only from an individual point of view you know um, how I wanted it done and what I wanted from the goalkeepers that were sort of under my control really. What do managers look for in a goalkeeping coach? Um, I think they just want a uh, sort of solid citizen really in terms of they know that I think when they look over because quite a lot of the time maybe for the first half an hour 45 minutes we're away from the outfield players and we're doing our own thing. One I think they need to know that when they look over maybe from afar because they're not there every single time when they look over from afar they feel comfortable that one the coach is doing the work the content is good and he's, he's in control of the goalkeepers and then in and around that i just deem whether you're a goalkeeping coach first team coach you're supporting the manager or the head coach in whatever he wants to do however he wants to get his points across monday to friday you need to be facilitating that and, and helping that and and, and being just that person who can who can help get that message across. I guess that's one thing that fans probably don't really know how much more goalkeeping, goalkeeping coaches do than just coach goalkeepers because you've got a say in, in non-goalkeeping matters as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, um, you know, defensive de defensive responsibilities and as a unit and how we work, the goalkeeper's integral in that. So when we're in meetings and talking about things, yeah, I have a voice. And fortunately, I worked with um, Roy before at West Brom and I, I really, really enjoyed my time because you, did, you do feel valued, you do feel like you have a voice. I think that's really, really important. And then thankfully at other places I've been, Alex Neal at Preston and Norwich, again, was, was great for me in terms of wanting an opinion. Uh, doesn't have to be the same opinion as the, as the managers. It can be different, you know, and, and provoke a debate. And, um, and I think that was quite healthy. So I, I've pretty much been in healthy environments all, all throughout my coaching uh, career to date. So uh, it's, it's been really beneficial for me. I want to talk about 
goalkeepers now. There's a lot of talk about the evolution of goalkeepers, how they've changed. Now they're sometimes seen as an additional outfield player in some team setups. Have you noticed that more in the time since you stopped playing? Yeah, I think now. I mean, even even when I played, I mean, there was a there was an emphasis on hitting certain areas of the pitch, or you know, Tony Mowbray, for example, at West Brom when we got promoted out of the Championship, we were a really open and expansive team. Um, and any time the ball was back at my feet, I was asked, "Can we play out? Can we keep possession?" So. I think it's relatively new, but not too new. Um, I think it's really, really important. I think a lot's made about goalkeepers being out, like you say, another outfield player and this and other, which is great if you're one of the top four or five teams and you have the lion's share of possession and you're not the busiest in terms of shots faced and this and other. That's excellent. But the, the, the role and position will never change. It's like keep, keep the ball out of the net is the crux of it, is the, is the plain and simple fact of it, is that keep it out of the net. And if your technique is good and sound and solid, and that's what we work on a lot, a lot of the time, along with a lot of other things, but if that technique is, is, is on a solid base and foundation, you've got a good opportunity of, uh, of doing your job and doing it well most weeks. The guy who's got the jersey at the moment in the Premier League, Wayne Hennessy, before you came to Palace, what were your, what were your thoughts on him as a goalkeeper? So Wayne made his debut for Wolves um, when I was at the other end uh, for West Brom in a, oh, in a, playoffs. In a playoff game, yeah, yeah. So, um, I know Wayne from a long time ago, obviously you, you meet when you play against the teams in the centre there and goalkeepers always have an, an affinity and a connection, you, you talk away. So I knew Wayne a little bit, as I, I knew Julian Speroni, uh, obviously Vicente coming from a different um, country, um, I, I didn't know Vicente, I only knew, knew him from seeing uh, games on La Liga, but um, no, from afar I looked and I like, again, you know, I'm, I'm drawn to like-minded people, I want just straightforward, you know, let's get the job done, let's work extremely hard, let's get muddy, let's get sweaty, let's do the work and um, you know, then present ourselves into the manager to be selected on a weekend and then whoever's selected, it's my job to support and, and give them anything I can in terms of uh, all my sort of knowledge and goodness and whatever I can and create the environment for them to go and play their best football. The goal is big, small, young, old, they play the best football when and I don't mean comfortable as in it's easy, I mean comfortable as in everything's right for them, they feel in a real good place and they, they can just put on their boots and gloves and, uh, and get on and get it done. It typically feels like Wayne's in a good place at the moment. Um, it's been great for him this season and the back end of last season. When you, when you first came in, what did you see as his strengths in the keeper? Um, I think the eye-catching things are going to be, you know, his distribution and this, that and the other, but um, me at six foot one, I'm a, I was a different goalkeeper altogether. But Wayne's size and stature and presence means that, you know, coming and claiming crosses and, and, and getting down the line and making blocks and saves and whatever, you know, he's he's got all them all them tools really. So um, I can only speak as a find and, and say that I've really really enjoyed um, working with Wayne and Julian at the back end of last year. The Chente's come in and made and, and added to that group. And it's, it's been really, really good, really, really positive, you know, in terms of issues, there hasn't really been any, and it's been really, really, really quite smooth. Obviously, ending the season the way we did is, was excellent. Everyone was on a high, everyone made a contribution, and I think you alluded to the fact, you know, Wayne was in the team, I think he made a real positive contribution to, uh, to the success of the team. Um, and I think the addition of Vicente, uh, and it should do, you know, as, as professionals, you should have a look around and there's healthy competition. And I think that's really, really important. Wayne's talked quite openly about how much he's enjoyed working with you. Is there anything in his game, like when you came in, what did you feel like you needed to work on? To um, I mean, I don't, I don't think in terms of specific, as in what are those fine details, but what was really impressive, um, my first session in, um, I, I just, spoke to them before we went out uh, and again like I say it's not like it's the first time I've met them I've met these these goalkeepers before but I just wanted to say that I'm really straightforward there's no smoke and mirrors there's nothing magical about what I do just want to create an environment create a real positive environment and they come out and immerse themselves in it and also probably look for a lot of feedback in terms of what they like what they don't like what they like you can keep serving them in slightly different ways and dress it up differently, what they don't like, I can just discard. I don't discard it from my coaching sort of 
manual, but for them, if they don't like a certain thing, we just, we just move away and, and we find a, a program and a, and a shape and a, a sort of rhythm to the session that works for them. The interesting thing with, with Wayne and Julian is they both said after the first session, um, the stuff they felt they needed to work on and always work on and sort of polish and, and keep on top of. Um, and, and, and you take it from there really. And I think sat here now talking to you, it's, more, it's adapted, it's moved, it's, it's very fluent, the process in terms of coaching. I'm not a, a commanding coach. It's, it doesn't have to be done this way else it's, it's dreadful or it's rubbish. Like I say, I look for a lot of feedback and, and, and want, the, want the players to, to give me some feedback about where we move on and, and how the sessions look and how they feel. And like, like I say, I mean, Wayne said some nice things and I think Julian and the Vicente are in decent positions as well in terms of uh, where they are um, or where they need to be uh, moving forward. So it, it's all good at the moment. And how do you keep learning as a coach, like coming up with new sessions to put on? Obviously, there's, there's loads online, but do you ever look online for anything? Else? Um, I probably probably tend not to. I think I don't want to. I don't want to try and uh, dress something up that somebody else has got, you know, in that respect. And I'm, I'm not sure if it has that same feel. I mean, I, I remember being a player coach, and me and Scott Carson would be out in the grass, um, and we would take something pretty basic and then try and tweak it and he was really open and receptive to doing different things and trying different methods and that just grows sort of arms and legs that way really so I know what I want to do, I know how it needs to look um, and I've basically got my way but what I would say is I've got lots of, lots of ways to, to sort of deliver it on the grass because I just think if you're just like that donkey on the beach who just plods up, plods back and it's just the same every day, there's a tendency of just switching off and, and it, being, uh, it being quite difficult then. So I like to keep it stimulated, I like to, like to work on you know, different things and the way it's, um, the way it's done. So um, no, I, I think it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of still fresh. I think if it becomes samey, I'll be the first to understand and, uh, and look to change it. Well, I like the so, thing where you're holding the, the Swiss ball. The, yeah. Okay. Gym, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a pretty new thing? Is that? Yeah, I think I think I wouldn't say it's revolutionary that people have never done it. I think yeah. people have definitely done it, but I think that ties in with what I was just saying about that you can get the little square rebound net which we've got, and that provides a rebound and a reaction and close in reactions and all them sort of things. But if every time you're doing reactions, you just bring the rebound, the little square uh, rebound net out. The lads will look and go, all right, we're doing a reaction session or whatever. So if you can deliver the same results but with different equipment and other bits and bats, then uh, you're halfway there. So that's, that was the Swiss ball the other week and this and the other. So, yeah, it's, it's stimulation for them, but also for me as well, you know, I, just, I don't want to just be doing the same things. And finally, just, just on, on Wayne, he's just broken the record for most international caps by a Crystal Palace player, as a Crystal Palace player, yeah. broken Milan Jimenez's record. Is it, it? You played international football as well. How good is it for a keeper to have that variety of going away and, and representing your country? Yeah, I, I mean, I think um, for, for me personally, it was a huge honour. Um, and then I was playing away in the Premier League and probably not getting as many caps as I did um, when I was going away. I obviously played back up to Shea Given, so slightly different for me. I sort of came away from it to prolong my club career and then went back into it when I was um, afforded an opportunity to come out of retirement with Trapattoni. So mine's sort of ebbed and flowed a bit. I think for Wayne, it's been fantastic for him because obviously he's been in the setup, he's got them caps and he's just worked really, really hard. I mean, I hadn't been long in the building and just talking really, just having a cup of tea and a coffee and, you know, he got onto the subject of, of himself and what he, what he wants to achieve and how he wants to do it. And, you know, it wasn't long into the conversation that he was talking about the caps and trying to, you know, break. I think it's Neville Southall's record for Wales and this and the other about caps. So he's chasing these these records, and you have to be playing. You know, there's no sentiment in international. Well, there's no sentiment in football, but certainly in international football, there's no sentiment. So nobody gives him the shirt because oh, he's a nice guy, or he's a great fellow, or this and the other. You've got to be performing at the uh, at the top level um, to wrap those games up. So uh, tremendous credit to him. He, he works really, really hard. So. And I'm sure he, when he goes away, listen, I stay in contact with him, he looks after himself, you know, you, you, you're sat with everything crossed, hoping that they come back from international duty, um, you know, as fit and healthy as when they, when they left. So, um, 
yeah, you know, it's um, it's a little break for them, but this is their bread and butter. I think the the club football.